Well, good morning, Shiloh. Good morning. Have you ever had a conversation with one, someone? You know, the conversation, the, the, the communication is so good, you just didn't want to stop talking to them. I mean, it might be a trusted friend or a colleague, but it could be a stranger, a stranger you meet in the elevator, and for whatever reason, uh, their spirit, your spirit, you just don't want to let them leave. But there you are. You stop at your floor, the elevator door is open, and you have to get out. Well, today, the elevator has stopped at my floor. And much like with that trusted friend, I just don't want to step out. I don't want to leave. And yet here I am. The elevator has stopped at my floor. The doors have opened. And it's time for me to step out. But I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Four years ago, I talked about the kind of excitement I had when I came to Shiloh, that excitement, that anticipation, but I also had a lot of fear. In fact, we have a video clip of it. Uh, let's watch. We, ta we point our fingers to the pastors, or maybe we point our fingers to the staff, or, or perhaps even we might point our fingers to those who are chairing our committees, but we rarely point our fingers at ourselves. Why? Truth be told, we are afraid. We are afraid to step up and lead. We're afraid that we might be inadequate. We're afraid that we might fail. We're afraid because people might discover that we're not all that we are cracked up to be. And fear is real in our lives. How do I know? Well, this morning I woke up with that heart pounding, stop you dead in your tracks, oh God, please take this cup away from me kind of fear, right? Why? Because I knew that I would be stepping into this pulpit preaching for you all and just hoping that I wouldn't fumble and bumble over every single word that I would proclaim this morning. Now, if you're real honest with me, maybe some of you woke up with that heart pounding, stop you dead in your tracks, kind of please God take this cup away from me kind of fear. Why? Because you think, how on earth would this 29-year-old female preacher lead Shiloh into his future? Now be honest. We're afraid, right? We are really afraid. Four years ago, I remember just how many people um, came up to me on that first Sunday and they said, yeah, I'm scared to death. I don't know how you're going to lead us. You're only 29 years old and you're a girl, as though I didn't know that, right? <laughs> I mean, how, how's this going to happen? How's this going to happen? Well, today I don't have the fear of hello. I have the fear of goodbye. Why? Because the future is unknown. The future is unknown for you, and it's unknown for me. I, I don't know what it's going to be like to be at Ginghamsburg Church. And you, you don't know what the new leader is going to be like here. And so sometimes we want to stay in our, our current reality, no matter how good or broken it is, rather than face the possibilities, the unknown of tomorrow. Sometimes we're just afraid of the unknown. But Jesus and many others throughout the Bible uh, demand, command, uh, declare, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. You know, fear is the opposite of faith. A lot of times we think doubt is the opposite of faith, but that's not true. It, it's fear that is the opposite of faith. You know, fear bombards us in such a way that sometimes we, we don't know how to move forward. We, we think to ourselves, we're afraid, so we don't do what God is calling us to do. We're, we're afraid, so we don't step out in faith. We're afraid, so we don't get off the elevator. We are afraid. And fear is an amazing thing. I mean, once those, those feelings of fear infiltrate our hearts and our minds, we are overcome with, with lies of inadequacy and negativity. And we say all kinds of things to ourselves like, I can't, or I won't, or I've never done it that way, or, or didn't work before, so how could it possibly work now? And before we know it, we've talked ourselves out of faith. But that's not who God created us to be. Jesus says, do not 
be afraid. This morning, we're continuing in our elevator gospel, and we're going toe-to-toe, face-to-face with fear. And we are praying for faith, praying for God to pour out his faith over us. So this morning, I want to invite you to open up your Bibles or pull out your sermon notes and turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. If you have a Bible from the gathering space, it's found on page 832. If you don't have a Bible, we have Bibles like this one out in the gathering space. Take one, write your name in it. It is yours. These are absolutely free. Why? Because we want to make sure everybody is reading the Word of God every day. When you read God's Word, when you read the Bible, it challenges you. It it, it helps shape your faith. And I don't know about you, but I need a daily dose of God in my life. Amen? Amen. And also, we want to invite you to bring these back with you every time you come to worship here at Shiloh. Now, 2 Timothy is a letter written by a follower of Jesus Christ named Paul. And Paul is writing to a young guy, you guessed it, named Timothy. Now, Timothy is a mere teenager when he meets this guy named Paul. And Timothy is afraid. I mean, he's young, young in the Lord, young in his faith. And and he's been sent out to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to all kinds of people. And so Paul sends him out with these sound words, these encouraging words, these challenging words about fear. This is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. Paul writes, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God gave us, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power and love and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in the suffering for the gospel by the power of God. And so here's this young guy named Timothy, and he's out there. He's sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, the first century is hostile territory. It doesn't always go well for Timothy. And so Timothy, he doesn't know what he's doing. He has this real fear of the unknown. And and suddenly he's bombarded with feelings of inadequacy and negativity. And Paul speaks these words, these words of life into Timothy. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, Timothy, but of power and of love and of self-discipline. And yet... As human beings, we are afraid. The single most barrier for us having faith, genuine faith, for us to be able to share that faith with others is fear. It's fear. We are afraid. Now, now why? Why would we be afraid? Over the last couple of weeks, we've been learning that it's the Holy Spirit that lives within us, right? That God has given us this gift, and, and this gift is the gift of the Spirit, and the Spirit lives and has its being in us. You know, like, we're this machinery, and it's not us doing it. It's God living within us. And yet, even though we have that knowledge, we're still afraid. Why? Well, last week, I find my, found myself at annual conference. Uh, we are part of the West Ohio Conference of the United Methodist Church that makes up nearly 1,100 congregations. There were thousands of, of clergy and laity gathered together at Lakeside to, to worship and to do what we call holy conferencing. It's a fancy name for business meeting, right? I mean, that's what we do, holy conferencing. And so there we were, holy conferencing, and I only had one responsibility on the conference floor. I had to introduce a speaker, right? That's all, two minutes top. And yet, as I was sitting behind the bishop, waiting for my turn to introduce this speaker, uh, my heart began to pound out of my chest. My palms got sweaty. I thought I was going to pass out, right? I was afraid. Do you realize that public speaking is the number one phobia throughout the entire world? Number one! And I do this sucker for a living, right? And I was scared out of my mind. And so what did I do? I quoted this verse. God, you did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and self-discipline. God, you didn't give me a spirit of fear. I don't have to be like this. You gave me a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. And suddenly, everything went calm, and I had peace. 
at peace. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only person that is afraid of public speaking or a lot of other things in our lives, right? And we are bombarded by fear all the time. You know, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're, you're struggling with your boss or, or you have this child that's difficult or, or maybe you're facing something you've never faced before. And, and because of that unknown, those feelings of inadequacy and negativity just begin to well up within your mind. And sometimes that fear can paralyze you. I mean, it can paralyze you, keep you from doing what God is calling you to do. I don't know how often people come up to me and say, you know, preacher, I feel this calling on my life. I've been waiting five years, 10 years, 15 years, because I'm just afraid. You know, every year vacation Bible school comes up and and I feel nudged to be a teacher, but you know, I'm just not going to do it because I'm what? Afraid. God's calling me to go over to Price Hill. You know, he's been nudging me and nudging me and nudging me. And I, I just, I can't go. Why? Because I'm afraid. God has this call on my life. A unique purpose, a, a way to serve. And, and I just am not going to do it because why? I'm afraid. Church, truth be told, there have been moments in my life that I have allowed fear to keep me from doing what God has called me to do. We're afraid. We're afraid, but, but Paul says to Timothy, and he's saying to us, God, I give you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-discipline. That Holy Spirit lives within us. It reigns within us. It calls us forth. We, we can do all kinds of crazy things we never imagined that we would do because the Holy Spirit lives within each and every one of us. Church, Jesus declares, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Now, Paul realizes that, you know, Timothy had a reason to be afraid, right? He had a reason to be afraid. Here he was in the first century, and he's this young guy, and he doesn't exactly know what he's doing, and and it's, you know, Christianity is brand new, and people are persecuting Christians. In fact, uh, they're killing Christians. Timothy is face-to-face with martyrdom, right? They could kill him for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he's all these reasons to be afraid. And you would think that Paul would have a little grace for this guy, right? To tell him, uh, you know, Timothy, it's going to be okay. You could just not do it today or for a month or a year, or a couple of years. I mean, you still are young. You, you got time, Timothy. But no, he kicks him in the butt, right? He tells him, get on out there. What are you waiting for? God has called you. And let me tell you, this isn't going to be easy, but you are called, Timothy, to suffer for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This faith thing isn't easy. It's never easy. You know, when we sign up to follow Jesus... We're saying no to ourselves and yes to Jesus. And Jesus takes us to places and spaces that we never ask or imagine. And we say yes. Jesus challenges us to follow him. And let me tell you, it's not easy for me to live this space, right? To leave this place. I've been crying all stinking morning, right? (laughs) Terrible. It's not easy. And yet, God calls us to leave anyhow. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to one of my colleagues in ministry, and he was asking me how I was doing. It's amazing, uh, the covenant of clergy that we have in the United Methodist Church. You've got 16,000, just in our, 16,000 basically pastors across the world who I'm in covenant with, encouraging me, asking me how I'm doing, cheerleading me along the way. I even had texts from multiple of them this morning. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. And so this one colleague, he says to me, how are you doing? And, and I'm telling him about Shiloh and this incredible gift that God has given me and how hard it is for me to let it go. And he says to me, don't you feel like Charlie Bucket in Willa Wonka's chocolate factory with the golden ticket? And I said, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. When I came here as a 29-year-old girl preacher. I felt like Charlie Bucket in the chocolate factory, like God had given me the golden ticket. You know, there was no other 29-year-old female pastor across the nation that was sitting in a gift like Shiloh. 
No one else has been handed a gift like I've been handed a gift. And so when the bishop and the cabinet, they decided to send me here, you better believe I felt like I had won the prize. The golden ticket. Why? Because this is and was the most potentially missional church in our annual conference. I always say that this church has more resources than any church its size across the nation. That God could do more in this church than any other church I know. That's why the conference sent Pastor Dave. I mean, Dave is one of the most incredible leaders across our denomination, let alone our annual conference. He is incredible. Now, there are differences between Dave and I. First and foremost, he is not going to have the fabulous shoes that I have, right? <laughs> I mean, he's just not. But you're also going to notice some incredible similarities. I mean, Dave and I are totally sold out to making disciples for the transformation of the world, right? I mean, we are sold out to Jesus. And so God has sent us this incredible leader that we can partner with so that we can continue to change this world for Jesus Christ. But it's not going to be easy, right? It's not going to be easy. What did Paul say to young Timothy? This is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Church, by the power of God, you are going to change this community and the city of Cincinnati for Jesus Christ. Amen? I mean, God is going to do amazing things in and through you, and he's going to lead you through the gifts and the spirit of Pastor Dave. And you know what? I have been praying. I've been praying that Pastor Dave stretches you, stretches you in ways you never ask or imagine. I mean, it's going to be incredible. Not easy, but incredible. Absolutely incredible, the kind of ministry that God's going to do in and through you. And because we're United Methodists, this connectional system, because we are the body of Christ, I get to be a part of that, right? Not with you on the front line, not leading you, but always remembering you in my prayers and cheerleading you on every step of the way. Shiloh, you have been an incredible gift, an incredible gift that, frankly, I don't always deserve yet God gave it anyway. And not only have you been a gift to me, but you've been a gift to my family. I mean, you've poured out your love over them in ways that you just don't understand have changed our life. And you always, always have a piece of my heart. Always. A piece of me will always be here. And so, church, it's time for me to get off the elevator, right? <laughs> to allow those doors to open and to step off and to let someone else step in. It's time for me to say goodbye. And it's not easy. And I'm afraid. And some of that fear is motivated by love. I mean, I love this place. And so it's hard to give up something that you love. Some of that fear is mov motivated by those lies, those lies of inadequacy, those lies of the unknown. Oh, Rachel, you can't, you won't, you shouldn't, you couldn't. But that's not my story. Oh, it will be if I listen to those lies, but that's not the story that God gave me. And it's not the story that God gave you. God has given you this story. A story that's God's story, a story that's worth sharing with the whole world, one that is written and one that's yet to be penned down. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see what God does in and through you. I can't wait to hear the stories. I can't wait to see the faith that you have in the midst of fear. I know God is going to do incredible things through Pastor Dave's leadership, 
through Pastor Daniel, who's coming to us as well, through the continued leadership of Pastor Bryn and Pastor Danny and the, the entire church staff and, and our leadership council and all of you. Church, have faith. Do not be afraid. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. And so this morning, I want to pray a blessing over you. I want God to bless you in ways you could never ask or imagine. So I want to invite you to hold your hands out like this and to close your eyes as we pray. Holy God, I praise you. I praise you for this incredible church. I thank you for the incredible support and love that Shiloh has poured out over me and over my family. God, this has been the best four years of our life. God, we've done things that we never imagined or asked to do, and yet, you challenged us. You called us to step out in faith. And we followed. And so God, for that faith in the middle of fear, I pray that you would bless this congregation. Bless each and every one. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Bless them. Bless every individual here. Bless every family, every child, every grandchild, every marriage, every friendship. God, I pray strength and health over everyone. God bless them. And God, for that future, that future that is unknown, that future that sometimes we anticipate with fear, God, I pray you blow that out of the water. God, I pray for Pastor Dave and Julie, and I pray for their entire family, for Amy and Abigail and and for Ben and Emily, Lord, and Lydia, God, I just pray that you would just pour out your blessing over them. And God, that they would do exactly what you're calling them to do. To transform this community by faith. I pray for Pastor Daniel and Nikki and their entire family, Lord, that, that in Price Hill and here in Delhi, they would impact these communities in such a way that people's lives would be changed. God, I pray for the continued leadership of, of Pastor Bren and Sarah and Jackson and Ava, Lord, and that, God, people would come to know you because of their faithfulness. And, God, I pray for Pastor Danny and Becky and Brooklyn and Bailey and that, God, you'd pour out grace upon grace and blessing upon blessing over them. God, for all the church staff, for all the leaders here, ministry leaders and the church council leadership and every single leader in this church, God, give them an extra dose of faith in the midst of fear that, God, they'd step out in ways they never imagined they'd step out. And God, for each and every person, I give you thanks for every story, for every moment, for all of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a gift. God bless this people. We pray this and claim this in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand with me as we sing our closing song?